Dave Norse here, RT on the camera. Today we're going to talk about where to set the fader on the control board. Now it's really important to get a good audio signal going out over the air um, to have the fader set in a proper place. Now, we all notice this white zero marker towards the top two-third of the control board. Now what we want to do is we want, when we're automated, to set our fader, the middle of the fader should be set right at this zero marker. What that's going to correspond with is if we look at the digital meter, that's going to correspond with this red hash mark on our meter level. Now, if we ever, in the event of an emergency, have to play off of a CD, we'll go to the CD channel. But because CDs can be mastered in various different levels, you want to be dynamic with the fader. So you're always going to start with the fader, with the middle of the fader, at that zero mark. But if you look at the meter, and you'll notice that the meter's hot, so instead of hovering around the minus 20 dB portion over here, we're seeing audio levels in the red up here. What that's indicating to us is we want to pull this fader down, because the signal strength is too hot. Conversely, if we're looking at the meter and the signal strength is too low, the tops are only reaching around here between minus 35 and minus 30. That means we want to push the fader up. Now, everything that's played through the automation system is mastered to a particular level. So you never need to adjust the fader level on the encode channels. It's only for things that are coming off the CD, or if we have a remote, we're bringing in an outside source to the control board, or we're playing something through the bulkhead, something like a mixer. Um, one of those particular examples. So that concludes how to set the fader on the control board.